homework time. Yes, happy, happy, happy homework time is here yet again. Let's go ahead and start usual, customary, and righteous way and jot our names down at the top of the paper. I will write my name and you go ahead and write yours. And then for the date, let's write today's date. All right, today you write the actual date. Good. Yes, finally we get to some word problems. Man, I've been waiting. Use the read, draw, write. That's what that stands for. Read. First you read, then you draw, then you write. Process to solve. Isla. She lives on an island. Isla walked three quarters of a mile each way to and from school on Wednesday. How many miles did she walk that day? Okay, well, we read. Um, we're looking at three-fourths of a mile, and it's to and from. I'm going to... I don't normally do all this underlining, but I do want to just emphasize that we're doing it to and from. Okay. And if they give you some extra information, like her name, um, and Wednesday. It doesn't really matter what day of the week it was. Okay, so uh, so to and from. So let's draw. We have we have her little island home, and then we have the schoolhouse with this, which is of course this big industrial block, which has doors and lots of windows. Okay. And so she walks, oh, let's draw her too. Hey, you tell me to draw, I'm drawn. Okay, so she walks to school, and that is three-fourths of a mile. And then, of course, she's going to walk back home, and that also is three-fourths of a mile. So what we're doing here, clearly, is just adding three-fourths of a mile and three-fourths of a mile. Well, yeah, three and three makes six, right? Okay, but we don't want to leave it in that improper fraction. Why? It's improper to do so. How could you leave it improper? All right, so let's go ahead and decompose or bust out that one hole. We're talking about fourths, right? So one hole is four-fourths. And how many fourths does that leave out of the six-fourths? There's another two, right? So that leaves two-fourths. So it's four-fourths and six-fourths. Well, the four-fourths we know is equal to one whole, and then two-fourths is two-fourths. Um, and we could simplify this. You probably even are at the point where you could just look at two-fourths and say, oh, that's equal to... You got it? Two is half of four, so it's equal to one-half, right? So we could go that extra step and say that this is one-and-a-half we need to put our units miles. And then we, of course, always need, this is part of the writing process, is to actually write it, Isla, La Isla Bonita walked. It's a Madonna song, ask your mother. Walked one and a half miles on Wednesday. Isn't the spelling of Wednesday pretty funky? I love that. Named for... Oh, we'll figure out who it's named for. Um, and let's go on to the next one. Yes. Well, we have some wonderfully industrious children here. While Isla is walking back and forth from school, Zach is reading. So Zach spent two-thirds of an hour reading on Friday and one and one-third hours reading on Saturday. How much more time did he read on Saturday than Friday? Oh, do you remember when we're comparing? We want to draw two uh, tape diagrams here to, to show the difference here. So remember tape diagrams? Good gosh almighty, it's been a long time since we've done these. So here's Friday, and that's two-thirds of an hour. And then here's Saturday. Saturday is obviously more. And remember, it doesn't have to be exact, just, you know, yay about one and one third hour. And so what we're trying to find is how much more. And this is why we draw tape diagrams. We're trying to find this right here. This is our X, our how much more. So you can see we're trying to find the, yes, keyword, the difference between them. So what operation are we performing here? Yes, we need to subtract, okay? So some of your classmates might be like, oh, look, two numbers. I'm going to add them. Um, 
that's not what you do. When you draw this, you see what you have to do. We're trying to find the difference between them there. And so our x is going to equal 1 and 1 third minus the 2 thirds, because we want to find how much more time. Well, you see right away we have an issue, um, but we can solve that. Because the one whole, well, we know in terms of thirds, the one whole is 3 thirds, and we have that 1 third with it which we will subtract the two-thirds from. And there's a couple ways we can go about that, but let's just do it this way. We'll combine the three-thirds and one-third. Sorry, that's a shabby-looking three there. Um, so those are four-thirds together minus two-thirds leaves. Yes, you got it. Two-thirds of an hour. And so good old Zach, don't forget our statement here. Zach read two-thirds of an hour more on Saturday. You know why? Because he didn't have to go to school. See, that's what Zach does when he doesn't have to school. He reads more. Let's go on. And in number three, forget about walking to school. Forget about reading it. It's melon time. Melon time, melon time, melon time. Mrs. Cashmore, she's a neighbor, bought a large melon. She cut a piece that weighed one and one eighth pounds and gave it to her neighbor. See? The remaining piece of melon weighed six eighths of a pound. How much did the whole melon weigh? Well, I'm sorry, kids. I just can't help myself. I have to make a melon graph. Melon graph. Melon graph. That's right. Here's the melon. I, I, I really just totally can't help myself here. So I'm going to say like, hey, this much of it here this is one and one eighths, right? That, that she gave away. Very generous, nice job. And then this is six eighths. See, you like my drawing? It's a melon graph. I, it doesn't really look like a melon, does it? How about if I put a little vine on it? Does that look like a melon now? <laughs> I don't know what it looks like. I tried, kids, sorry. All right, so we know we obviously need to add these together to get the whole melon, which we can call M. I love assigning variables. So let's go ahead and say one and one eighth pounds plus six eighth pounds will give us the total weight. Wow, this one's actually kind of easy in a way, right? We don't have to do any decomposition here. One and one eighth and six eighths. Well, the one whole is going to remain as is, and the one eighth and the six eighth together make seven eighths. And that's it. And we're talking about pounds. And so the whole melon. The whole shebangy melon weighed one and seven eighth pound. That one was so easy, I like had to stop and like check myself. Like, did I do something wrong? Shouldn't be that easy, but it is, right? Okay. Nice job, Miss Cashmore. Let's move on. So our Eureka mathematicians were working late one night and getting a little peaked, a little hungry around the edges, and they start thinking, boy, a nice slice of melon would be good. Oh no some oatmeal cookies. Because the number four, Allie's little sister, wanted to help her make some oatmeal cookies. First, she put five-eighths cup of oatmeal in the bowl. Next, she added another five-eighths cup of oatmeal. Finally, can't stop her now, she added another five-eighths cup of oatmeal. How much oatmeal did she put in the bowl? I'm feeling goofy tonight, kids, so look, when we look in the bowl, what do we see? I'm going to draw a big honking bowl here. Bowl. What's in the bowl? Well, we have three things going on there. We have five eighths, right? In there. That's my pile of oatmeal. Then we have another five eighths. And then, yay, verily, a third time she put in five eighths. So we could see that they're all together in the bowl, and so we can actually see that we need to add. And uh, I'd like to call it O for oatmeal, but I'm going to call it C for cookies because using O can get confused with a zero. So we're just adding these up. So 5 eighths and 5 eighths and 5 eighths. I should put a spoon and stick it out of the bowl. There we go. Oh, you like my spoon? All right, so five and five and five make, that's right, 
15, and we're talking about eighths. And we can decompose out the one whole is 8 eighths. Now, how many eighths does that leave? 8 and what make 15? 8 and 7 make 15, so that leaves 7 eighths. All right, so now this 8 eighths equals one whole, and we have the 7 eighths. And remember I told you on the last lesson, we could just kind of start skipping that in between 1 eighths plus 7 eighths equals 1 and 7 eighths. We just did it. We didn't skip it, though. We just did it in our heads. So there we go. 1 and 7 eighths. We just need a statement. Um, she, rather than writing Allie's little sister, she pronouns. She put 1 and 7 eighths. Don't forget the unit. Cup. Of oatmeal in the bowl. Good job making cookies. We're rounding the corner past the halfway mark. Let's go on. Ah, Marsha is also baking. Can't stop these people. Whoever's writing these, I swear this guy's getting hungry. He's like, no, not oatmeal cookies. Brownies. Now we're talking. So Marsha baked two pans of brownies. Her family, wow, gluttons, sorry, her family ate one in five, six pans. I hope that included her and they didn't just scoff all her brownies. What fraction of a pan of brownies was left? Well, hey, let's draw some pans of brownies, and I'd like to draw them like in three dimensions, but that's going to make dividing up the fractions too difficult. So there are two pans of brownies. So they ate one whole. So that's the whole pan of brownies. They just ate that. And this one, they ate five, six. So remember, within a rectangle, if I want to make six relatively equal portions, I can draw five lines. So one, two, three. Oh, that's bad. Four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. Okay, so they ate one and five, six, and so what I'm trying to find here, this is what's left over, and we'll call it M for poor old Marsha. Um, so we're, we can see we're trying to find the difference. Here's the whole thing, and this is an important bracket here, the whole two pans of brownies. And so then this portion, which the family ate, was one and five, six of the pans. And so she has this left, and you can tell just by looking at this bad boy what the answer is, but we'll do some math. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking the whole amount of brownies, the two, and to find the difference between them, what's left over, we just need to subtract what they ate, the one and five, six. Um, there are several ways we can go about this, all right? Um, mm, let's do it this way. Let's do the two minus one, because we see that's easy, right? And that of 2 minus 1 is 1, and then we still have to subtract the 5, 6. You see how that works? What I did was 2 minus 1, and then I'll subtract the 5, 6. So 1 we know is equal to, I'll oh, put equal signs here, 6, 6. And we can easily subtract 5, 6 from that. And what's left? You got it, 1, 6, which we confirm very easily. And then our little statement says, poor Marsha. I don't know, maybe she's happy about this. I shouldn't assume she's bemoaning the loss of her brownies. Has only, it's funnier this way though, one sixth pan of brownies left. All right, Marsha, go make some more brownies and hide them this time. Let's go finish out here. Well, I guess our friends over in Eureka land got themselves a little snack because now they're back to writing about more scholarly endeavors, in this case, writing letters. So Joni wrote a letter that was one and one-fourth pages long. Katie wrote a letter that was three-fourths page shorter than Joni's letter. How long was Katie's letter? Okay, so I'm actually going to draw, I'm going to do this one vertically instead of horizontally. So there's Joni and here's Katie. All right, so Joni writes one page, and then one-fourth, so I can draw three lines in here, of another page. So she fills this whole page, dear diary, dear camp counselors, whatever, one and one-fourth. And now Katie, hers is three-fourths of a page 
shorter. Oh, so we don't know exactly how that how that is. We could kind of look at it and get a sense that it's going to be less than a page. And so it's just kind of some amount. We don't really know what quite yet. So I can't even draw any, but what I, you know, uh, details in there. What I do know is that Joni wrote one and one fourth, and I know the difference between them, this right here, the difference between them, oh, that's a sloppy line. Let me do a little bit better than that. This is three fourths, the difference between them, you see? where hers ends, okay, and where hers ends. So that is what we're trying to find, and we'll call it P for page. All right, so now, if we take Joni's letter, we can see we're trying to find the difference between them, so obviously the operation is subtractione. So we take Kate, uh, Joni's letter, rather, and subtract uh, the difference between them, did I say we're trying to find the difference? No, we know the difference. Sorry, we want to find Katie's. Sorry about that. I said that backwards. So if we take uh, Joni's and subtract the difference between them, rather, we will get Katie. So we don't need this P here. Hey, everybody makes mistakes, man. All right, so uh, how can we do this? Well, one good way to do it is to decompose the one whole as four-fourths, and we have with that another fourth. If we put those together, we get five-fourths, which we can easily now subtract three-fourths from, and that gives us two-fourths, and you could even go another step, because as we already did recently, yeah, you can look at that and say, oh, two is half a four, it's equal to one-half. Um, so let's actually do that. I don't think your teacher will mind one bit. Um, so now our statement would say that Katie's letter was half page long, period, and done. Look, you went and did it. You completed another homework time. Enjoy your evening, and I'll see you again next time. It is, once again, homework time.